diabetic. And then they showed us this picture, they show us this movie or, or, or this commercial, how this chip can play itself out. And there's an old woman inside of the store and she's shopping in the store. And the young guy is next to her stealing things. He's putting them in her clothes, in, in his clothes. And she says, oh my God, he's stealing. And he fills his clothes with food and items and he runs out the store and, and the old woman is in shock. And then the attendant, the clerk, runs behind the man and says, you forgot your receipt. <laughs> you forgot your receipt. He had a chip inside of him. And when he went through that barrier, it recorded his bank account, the money that, 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 was, that, that he took out the store, everything simultaneously uh, happened, and then she said, you forgot your receipt. What a beautiful world it would be. What a beautiful world. But the problem we're facing is, what else can happen with that chip? What else can be done to the chip? Your emotions could be controlled. Your mind could be controlled. You could even be killed. Well, billah. In the earlier decades, people wrote about this. George Orwell wrote about, you saw 1984. You saw people talking about animal farms, talking about Big Brother. They wrote about this before. Now it is coming to pass. And there are so many theories about this. We are bombarded with this. We see people talking about the Freemason order, the Illuminati, the international bankers, the Zionists, alien consciousness. Even some groups are coming up, satanic type groups, new age type religions. All of these coming up and what we find in most cases is that all of these groups are worshipping a force. If you go to the highest level of these groups, you see they are doing a type of worship. It is not to God. It is not the God of Moses or Jesus or Muhammad, peace be upon them. It is another force. And they are worshipping this force. They are seeking and taking strength out of this force. And nobody can say exactly what it is. But Muslims have the bottom line. And Allah has told us, قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقْ وَزَاهَةَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقَ The truth has come. And falsehood will vanish. Because surely falsehood is a perishing, vanishing thing. And so the Quran and the, and the Hadith, the revelation gives the Muslim the bottom line. And we need to work from the bottom line up instead of from the confusion to the bottom line. And when we go to the bottom line, we find that the Qur'an talks about in the beginning of time, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created the creations, and then He created Adam alayhi salam. And He turned to His angels, and amongst the angels was a jinni named Iblis, may Allah protect us from him. There was a jinni amongst them, who was so pious, and so knowledgeable, he was given a place with the angels. The angels could not disobey Allah. And so Allah told them in the, in the oft-repeated verses, Adam illa Iblis. He told them, bow down to Adam. And all of them bow down is except Iblis. And Surah Al-Kahf told us, Kana min al-jinn. He was jinni. He was not a fallen angel. He refused to bow down. Why did he not bow down? You made me from fire and you made him from clay. Arrogance and pride. And you could say he was a racist. He was the first racist. Because he didn't want to accept Adam. Not because of anything that he or Adam did, but because merely of the creation of Adam alayhi salam. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed him and sent him down and promised him hellfire. But the shaitan asked for respite. He asked for a chance to come to the creation. And he made it clear and the Quran tells us very clearly that he said, I will come around them on their right side, on their left side, above them. I will make them change the creation of Allah. And in one of the verses, and there are so many, so much truth which is in front of us, if we would read this book, 
not just to read. Read it for the knowledge. Read it for the guidance in the world that we are living in today. And it tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah tells us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا وَلَا تَتَّبِيُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوًا مُبِينٌ إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And so Allah told us, O oh people, eat from the earth that which is permissible and wholesome, that which is good, and do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. For he is to you an open enemy. Verily, he will command you with immorality and evil, sexual immorality. And he will also command you to say about Allah that which you know not. In another verse, Allah tells us, الشيطان يعدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء that he will threaten you with poverty and he commands you with immorality, with corruption he commands you with this and so we see certain themes put these themes in your mind when you think about the international system what are the foundations of the system that we are all living under the fear of poverty evil, corruption. And then we see also in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah tells us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامِ رِجْسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُوْقِئَ بَيْنَكُمْ الْعَدَاوَ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Allah tells us, O you who believe, surely intoxicants and gambling and sacrificing at the idols and telling the fortune with arrows, all of this is a, an evil abomination from the work of the devil. Stay away from it in order that you will be successful. Surely the shaitan wants to put in between you hatred and animosity by using intoxicants and gambling and to block you from the remembrance of Allah and from your salat, from your prayers. So will you not then stop? Allah tells us, won't you stop? But what did the evil one put in front of us? Look at the categories that are in front of us. Evil. Go to the movie and see. The hero of half the, of the movies is a criminal. The thieves and the bandits are now the heroes that people, young people especially, are idolizing. Look at the music. Look at the expression coming out of the anarchy and the music in the younger generation. Then look at now the world. Immorality. And then you see it in the movies, you see it in the programs. And some of our own Muslims are watching, especially sisters are watching during the day, they watch Days of Our Life and soap operas and, you know, who's sleeping with whose neighbor and stuff like that. And, and then they even tape the program. Yeah? They tape the program so they can see it when they come home. This practice in Muslims, man. It's unbelievable, man. And so then you see it happening. Drugs. Al-Khamar. Because intoxicants includes not only alcohol, it also includes drugs. The cocaine, the heroin, the crack, the LSD. That which covers up your intelligence. All of this is in it, right inside of our book. So now let us look at a modern society. What happens on Friday night? When a person wants to enjoy themselves, where do they enjoy themselves? Where do they think they have to go to? The majority of the people say, well, first, my father, I got to get a drink. Let me get a drink first. Okay? Let me take a smoke. I got to get ready now for the night. And then they're off for the night. How do you enjoy yourself? What are the places being built right here in Melbourne? Right? The Crown Casino. Where are people going to? Even here in Australia, down under. 
you have what? The second largest casino in the world. And you're down under. <laughs> what about the people who are up on the other side? <laughs> casino life. Gambling. And the gambling will destroy you. You see what it says here? Rijsun min amal shaitan. It is a filth. It is an abomination from the work of the devil. Stay away from it. But no, the roulette wheel. They play all the, the one-armed bandit. The dice, the cards. And they keep thinking, I'm going to win. I'll go back tomorrow. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. And the shaitan plays on their mind and destroys their families. Destroys the society. But it's considered to be okay. He's just enjoying himself. Or he's just drunk. But what causes most of the accidents on the highway? Go to the, go to the transport authority right here in Australia. And see over the Christmas vacation. And the main holidays. What causes most accidents on the highway? And you'll probably find it is alcohol. It is people being intoxicated. Toxic. You're being poisoned. It poisons the system. Throws off your balance. Changes your way of thinking. And so we find in this new world order that we become intoxicated. We are involved in gambling. No, I won't go to the casino. I will go to the discotheque. I will go to rave. And I will rave all night. And we have a thing in Cape Town. I don't know whether you have it. They call it ecstasy. And they gave it to the young generation, ecstasy. They use all these names, right? Ecstasy, like you're really you know, in some type of heaven. And they, 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 they give it to the younger generation and he stays up all night and he's raving around. And to catch the Muslims in Cape Town, they even made the rave center look like a masjid. On the side it looks like Masjid al-Aqsa. On the front it looks like the Blue Mosque in Turkey. And they had seven levels of rave. And even for the Muslims in Cape Town, and this is an advanced form of corruption, they said, no, um, when you're dancing, if you want to eat, they have halal food. <laughs> so you can have halal food. And you can still be a Muslim, you see? That's how it was tailor-made for us. And so, arousing passion arousing this why do you think in these movies there's this terrible violence they are showing and then always the, this erotica this Greek concept now coming in where the body people worship the body the shape of the body being the most important thing and the young woman feels she must show something from her body in order to be acceptable she must expose her body even to her enemies. She exposes her body and thinks that she's modern or thinks that she's intelligent and she has self-esteem because she's exposing her inner parts even to her enemies. And up until now, with years of so-called women's liberation, they are still selling cars with beautiful girls. Lamborghini, the Porsche, they're still doing that exploiting the sexuality of women in order to sell products. And so we see it happening. We see it, and in the second, and in the last part of this verse, or, or, the, or in the last part of the categories, the Khamer and the Maser also shirk the polytheism, worshiping other gods, and fortune-telling. And people are involved in superstition and in fortune-telling, getting their palms read going to people, to, 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 the, to the magic people, in order to get married, or in order to hurt somebody, or in order to be successful in business, afraid of numbers, afraid of 11, afraid of 13, afraid of 666. And so fear is placed in the hearts. Superstition is placed in the hearts. And behind it, a lying deceiver. You think you're going to paradise. You think you're enjoying yourself, but the alcohol and intoxicants is killing your body. Lethal social diseases is cutting down your population. Gambling is ruining the family, ruining communities, but it's done in the name of progress and democracy 
and the 21st century. And the Quran also tells us 